This is the Inspire 3, a full-frame 8K filming flying cinema camera that costs $16,000. But if you add all the accessories and extra batteries that you're going to want, then you're going to be in the neighborhood of $30,000, which is the same as this small airplane here. Speaking of this small airplane, you can get some great footage with the Inspire 3 if you strap it to the sides of that small airplane and fly around with it. First, what does $30,000 get you? It gets you this really nice rolling case from DJI with the drone inside. You get one or two remotes, depending on how you kit it out. There's space for 12 batteries, and that's also part of what that $30,000 is gonna get you. Now, the gimbal and camera on this is the new Fantastic X9 camera that's capable of shooting up to 8.1K in 75 frames a second. And if you get the ProRes RAW and Cinema DNG license, which you're gonna want to unlock all the features, you get unbelievably great footage. You get the new battery charger, which is capable of fast charging all eight batteries up to 90% in a really short amount of time and then trickle charging the rest of the way or charging them regularly. It also has a power delivery port on the side that charges the remote, which charges the internal WB37 battery and the remote at the same time and basically gives you like six to seven hours of runtime on this remote. And then you also get all four lenses, which are compatible with the X9 the new 18 millimeter, the 24 millimeter, the 35 millimeter, and the 50 millimeter. While I filmed with a few different Inspire 3s over the last few months, DJI actually sent me this drone. Hey, the drone arrived safe and sound. Do I get to keep this thing? No. No. We'll need it back. Okay, so when you say I have to send it back to you, is that in one piece? So just to be clear, DJI is just lending me this drone, no money changed hands, and I do have to send the drone back. Ideally, in one piece. So the first place we're gonna go test this drone is getting dropped off via helicopter by the side of a glacier for an entire day of filming the mountains, waterfalls, and glacier in this area. This is an ideal place to test out this drone. When it all comes down to it, the footage coming out of this camera does not disappoint. Next, I wanna test its ability to handle speed, both testing the top speed of the drone, which DJI says is 58 miles an hour, and also how well it works as a dual-op machine. Because while the Inspire 3 can be operated solo very well, we'll talk more about that later, it's really designed as a dual operator system where you have one person operating the camera and one person operating the drone. And this is where the real power of the Inspire 3 lies because this enables you to fly much more complicated flight paths and get much closer to subjects because you have the safety of one person concentrating fully on flying the drone and another person concentrating fully on capturing the scene. It enables you to get shots that you just cannot get with any other kind of drone. And the ideal place to test this out is in Valdez, Alaska with my friend Lee, who's an incredibly talented helicopter pilot with thousands of hours of flying in this area. The 8K 75 frames a second is incredible because you can take a scene of something that's fast moving and slow it down to have this dreamy effect. But the 4K 120 can take slow motion footage to a whole nother level. And because
because the new X9 camera is a dual base of 800 and 4000, we get some spectacular low light performance. And especially if you operate around a city where there's a fair amount of ambient light, then you can get some incredibly clean, very low light imagery. Which makes me wonder, can I film with just moonlight? And can I film the Aurora? I'm not gonna show you that video now because I've got a whole video coming about working in extremely low light with the Inspire 3 as I chase the Aurora. One thing I haven't seen many people talking about the Inspire 3 is the photo quality. Because it's an 8K sensor, it gives you about 44 and a half megapixel photos and the dynamic range, the quality of these photos is absolutely phenomenal. The amount of information and dynamic range of the raw photos gives you a huge amount of latitude to work with these photos in post. A few things that I've realized from testing the Inspire 3 over the last few months. One, the range and the speed that this drone has gives me confidence like no other drone. I would never have flown this way with the Inspire 2. Just because the signal link and the FPV camera are so much better gives me the confidence to be able to fly some of these places and do the things, the shots that we got with total confidence in the drone responding exactly the way it was supposed to. And the new controller from DJI is really nice to use. All of the buttons laid out in a way that's easy to grab them quickly. The sticks respond well. The whole drone just flies so much better than any other drone on this scale. And here's where the FPV camera really shines because it has insanely good low light performance. This was two and a half hours after sunset lit by nothing but moonlight. And because it flies so well, because the FPV feed is so strong and because the drone link is so solid, it gives me the confidence to push this drone farther and harder than any other drone I've flown in this size. Now that the Inspire 3 has 360 degree obstacle avoidance, it's given me the confidence to fly it in places that I never would have flown the Inspire 2. And with the ability to tilt the gimbal up up to 80 degrees without getting any propellers or the drone in shot, it gives you the option to get some really creative shots. But this thing also makes an incredible handheld camera. Better? Come yep. Right. Yeah, come in tight left with these Turaks. One of the features included in the Inspire 3 that I'm most excited about is time code. So time code's super easy. I have a tentacle sink here. There's a little 3.5 millimeter jack right here. You plug it in, it updates the time code. And then from this point on, everything recorded with the Ronin 40, the Inspire 3, and my tentacle track E will all be synced via time code. Now time code might not seem like a big deal, but as soon as you get into multi-level productions where you're working with multiple cameras, drones, anything like that. Having time code makes it really simple and really easy to sync up all your footage and post. You just drag everything into a timeline, synchronize it via time code, and then all your shots, whether you started or stopped recording or not, doesn't really matter. They all end up totally in sync because of time code. So all these shots right here, everything I'm filming at the moment has been recorded with the Tentacle Sync Track E, the Inspire 3, and the Ronin 4D. Now, unless you're working on big professional productions or multi-camera shoots, you don't really need time code. But if you do need it, it's a game changer for being able to work with different cameras and synchronize everything up in post and save yourself a lot of time having to manually synchronize clips. Another huge improvement on the Inspire 3 for solo operators like me who fly the drone by themselves a lot is Spotlight Pro because it takes some of the workload off of you of having to operate the camera, but still enables some pretty incredible shots.
And that brings us to the new RTK mode, which enables centimeter level precision if you get the RTK module. So what you'll need is the DRTK2 module, which costs about $3,500, and you wanna make sure it's in broadcast mode, which is indicated by the green light blinking five times. And then of course, you're gonna need the Inspire 3, and then we need to connect to the RTK base station and tell the drone to use it. The way to do that is go into the menu, go down to RTK, find the base station, connect to it by tapping on RTK, and back out of that, and then turn on. Now you should see a bunch of information here, and then turn on RTK positioning. That tells the drone to use RTK in its positioning mode. And what this enables is center media level precision which from my quick test and the little bit that I've played around with it, enables some really cool VFX stacking shots. Like for example, I can have a conversation with myself. When you add the RTK module, it takes that and triangulates the GPS location of the drone, the GPS location of the RTK module, and takes that one meter accuracy and shrinks it down to about one centimeter, which gives you the ability to do incredible waypoint missions and repeatable routes and dollies. And if you're working on a big set or movies or big productions where you need to do repeatable routes again and again and again, this is a game changer. The Inspire 3 is a massive upgrade from the Inspire 2, and I will have a whole comparison video coming. While the price seems outrageous, I get it. This drone is not for everybody. For most people, a Mavic 3 will do incredible. But if you make most of your living with drones and you work on high-end productions, what you get out of a turnkey package from buying the Inspire 3 is unlike anything else on the market right now. But next, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video right here. I'll see you over there. As always, if you have questions, let me know in the comments below or join my live stream, which happens most Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern, where we can have more of a conversation. Maybe I can answer questions I didn't get to in this particular video. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.